Welcome to Terra at Home with your host, Chris Moretti. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. The heat of the summer has finally fully kicked in and the gardens are growing with full force. This morning I'm joined by Sid Pell from Scots Canada and Sid, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me here. You're going to talk us through some of the ins and outs of feeding plants. Now that That's we're right. in the, the main part of the summer, um, some people may have sort of forgotten about feeding. Mm -hmm. You know, we get all gung-ho in the early spring, but exactly. it's important to maintain the nutrition of soil and make sure our plants are getting everything they need. Why do plants need to be fed? Well, really for the same reason that people need to be fed. Plants, plants get their, their food from two areas. One is from the sun, but also the majority of it comes from the soil. And that's why it's important to feed your plants because the soil can support some food, yep. but over time your plants are consuming the, the nutrients from the soil, and over time that nutrient level d d plant, uh, diminishes. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to add back some more nutrients to the soil, and you can do that with plant food or there's other ways as well. So a lot of the time we get started in, and when we plant things we, we think to use a product. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's miracle Grow or something that's applied when we plant plants but mm -hmm. that nutrient load is only good for a certain amount of time. So now that that's we're in correct. mid summer it's probably a good idea to, to do some feeding again. Exactly. Yeah. So there's there's really there's, there's two main types of plant food that people use. Yep. There's uh, what's called quick release, water, water soluble or quick release plant food. Yep. And that gives a short burst of energy and that that needs to be replenished probably every seven, seven, week, seven days to two weeks. You should okay. feed every seven or every two weeks is, is optimal. Uh, and then there's something called slow release or continuous release plant food. Now this is designed to break down slowly over time and it feeds for about three months. So for season. someone who maybe isn't so great with remembering a routine exactly. or something like that, it's yeah. sort of a, an easy solution where you can just sort of apply it and then hopefully remember in three months or so. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> slow release is becoming more and more popular just for that reason. A lot of gardeners are looking for convenience and that's really the easiest way to make sure that you get your planting, you get your feeding in right at the beginning of the season and it will feed all through the season. And three months is really an ample time because in Canada really that's your whole growing season anyway. Definitely. Um, do all plants need to be fed? Should we be feeding things like our hanging baskets and our vegetable gardens? And, and are they the same per, or are they different? Pretty much every different type of plant can benefit from plant food and there's different plant foods for different plant types. Certain, uh, let's say vegetables like, like herbs for instance, they don't need a lot of food. They're not very hungry if you will. Yeah. But other foods, things like tomato plants, cucumbers, the bigger the plant grows and the faster it grows, the more likely it's going to need energy from plant food to, to supplement what's already in the soil. Well, and especially in you know North America, in Canada, especially where our growing season is kind of relatively short, I imagine mm -hmm. it's important to give them our plants as much nutrition as possible to make sure they make the most of that short season. Well, exactly. So what, what we recommend is that when you start at the beginning of the season, when you're planting your, your plants, always put down some sort of plant food. The best thing to use there is a transplant food, such as Quick Start. Okay. And that gives it a good quick energy and gets the roots stimulated and gets them to start to grow. And that also reduces what's called transplant shock. When you first put a plant in from a container into the ground, it, it, it's in a completely different environment. It's not used to being outside oftentimes. So it's under a lot of stress. So a transplant solution is great for that. It really ensures that your plants get off to a great start. Once you do that, you feed probably twice with this, so the first week and then the second week you feed with this. And then you switch on to a regular feed such as the water soluble, or you could put down the continuous release. Quick start is something that we highly advocate here at Terra <laughs> because um, we know that feeding the root system at the time of planting exactly. greatly benefits the plant. Right. Um, you said you need to apply it a couple of times. Right. What is it about that formulation that makes it good for plants that are just starting out? Well, the, the, main, uh, the main reason is it's very high in, in phosphorus. Okay. And phosphorus is what really st stimulates the roots. On a, on a typical plant food, there's things called the N, P, and the K. You see these mystery numbers. A lot of people aren't sure what they are. N is the nitrogen, P is the phosphorus, and the K is the potassium levels. And what we like to say is it's NPK is up, so that's what gives it the, the power to grow. Down is the phosphorus, which stimulates the root growth, and the K is the all around, and that's what really gives it its overall strength and builds the healthy cell walls. So you need the proper balance of that. So in the beginning of the season, it's great to have a high phosphorus. Later on in the season, you want to give it a lot of uh, more nitrogen 
to really help it grow. And that's when you switch into something, a high nitrogen formulation such as this, which is 24, 8, 16. Okay, so up, down, all around is what right. we're looking at when we're seeing those three numbers. Exactly. So those are I, sort of the main nutrients in any kind of formulation, but there's more to it than that. There is more to it than that. And you could, a lot of people get hung up just on looking at that. There was also what's called uh, micronutrients and secondary nutrients in plant food. And that's really what separates some manufacturers from other ones, is, is the formulation of that. Micronutri uh, mic micronutrients are things like magnesium and copper and calcium and a whole bunch of other, hosts of other minerals that you just need trace amounts. Just like when you take your vitamins, when you take a multivitamin, it's great to have many different things in it. Your plants also need that, and oftentimes your soil can't supply that. Mm. Now, we've talked a bit about conventional fertilizers, slow mm -hmm. release and and, uh, and liquid, mm -hmm. uh, but there's this whole other host of things in looking at organic solutions. It's something exactly. more and more people yep. are talking about. <clears throat> Can you tell us about the difference between the two and, and what we're sort of looking at? We've got organic choice bone meal, just right. one example of, of the, the exactly. organic yeah. bone. So there's a whole host of organic plant foods as well. Most of them are sort of slow release also. And typically the, the, the main difference is really the source of the nutrients. So they, they all have the NPK, but it's the source of the nutrients. So this is more um, derived either through chemicals or mined, whereas that's more of a natural source. Um, what's interesting is when a plants are absorbing the nutrients from the soil, what's actually happening is the nutrients are there and they get broken down in the soil by these things called little tiny bugs, if you will, called microbes. Yep. The microbes ingest the nutrients and then they excrete them in a form that's digestible by the plant. Without okay. these microbes, your plants actually wouldn't ingest any food. And the microbes really don't care what they're eating. They don't care if they're eating an organic source or an inorganic source. It doesn't make a difference to them. And then what, what the plant ingests is the same. It's indetectable by the plant what it's, what it's eating, ingesting. Okay. So the benefit of, the, the main benefit of a, of a synthetic, if you will, plant food versus a natural one is really just in that you could get a much better concentration of the nutrients, you get a lot better blend, you get the optimal blend for what the plant needs. But you can use organic ones, you could also do things like add things like manure to your soil or compost, which is great and we really do advocate that. One thing that we do say is with, with the synthetic plant foods is that's the one downfall of them. They give the optimal amount of nutrients to, this, to the plant but they don't do anything to remediate the soil, and that's important okay. to do. So every season, we suggest that you add some manure to your soil, add some compost, uh, mulch, everything Things like that, that will, yeah. just to really re, uh, to, to re-strengthen the soil structure. It's really important. So both supply nutrients, one versus the other is better at uh, improving the soil in general, but mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, you can really use either one. You can use either. Again, you'll get, you'll, you'll get a better feed with the synthetic, some people are more comfortable with the organic still, even though it really makes no difference to the plant. So it's really kind of a matter of personal choice. Exactly, exactly. Sid, thank you so much for giving us the rundown on all of this stuff. It's very been welcome. very My helpful. Pleasure. And of course, as we move through the summer months, you have to remember, make sure you're feeding your plants to make sure you get the best out of them this entire season. Coming up after the break, more from Tara at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. But some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. joined in studio by Lauren Lieberman of the TD Festival of Friends. Thank you so much for being with us, Lauren. My pleasure to be here. It's an exciting weekend to be in the Hamilton area. 
Yeah, uh, Festival of Friends is the, the king of all local festivals. Uh, we don't mean any disrespect to everybody else, but we're the big one and we anticipate huge, huge things this, this year for us. So for those maybe who don't know anything about it, give us a little bit of a rundown. What should, what should we be looking sure. for here? Sure. The Festival of Friends is going into its 36th year. This year um, marks a significant change for us as we have a change of venue. But we've been primarily known as a, uh, as a music festival, um, but it's more than just that. There's, there's food, there's shopping, there's all kinds of wonderful experiences. And, and truly, there's a, a whole lot more this year than there's ever been before. I think uh, among the things that you've mentioned already, something that really makes the festival different than maybe some others that are in the area or even in the country is the fact that it's free. Right, and we, we love the notion um, every year we get emails from, from mostly in terms of Western New York, and they see our lineup and they want to come, and we get scolded time and time again for having a terrible website because no one can find how to get tickets. Right. And, and we, we suggest to them that it's free, and that's inconceivable. And, and it's a point I really like to make. Every weekend in the summertime in the Hamilton area, there's wonderful things to do for free. Oh, yeah. That's a Hamilton thing. We're very lucky in this region. Yeah. That, and that's pretty strange uh, outside of this region. And yeah, that events such as ours exist all over the world and all over the country, but not free they don't. That's for sure. And it's certainly something that sets it apart. And uh, I love that it makes it accessible literally to everybody. Of course. And, and that is key. We get huge crowds. Um, for the two reasons, one being the draw that it is, yeah. and then the, the other side of it being that it is accessible without having a ticket price uh, anybody can afford to go. So let's talk about the new venue. The move to the Ancaster Fairgrounds yes. for this year is obviously a big change. Very much so. Uh, what uh, what does that bring? Why the move and, and what, uh, what venue? We, well, we were in Gage Park for 35 years. Yeah. We love Gage Park. We, we honor our history and tradition and we get all that. But it's been very difficult for us the last few years to have stayed there. And in terms of making decisions that, that provide us with a positive future, shouldn't be disrespecting our past. Yeah. And that was never our intention. But the Ancaster Fairgrounds is has turned the Festival of Friends into a much more regional event. Yeah. We're right off the 403, so close to Haldeman, Norfolk, and Brant, and Kitchener, Waterloo, and the rest of it, as we are a Hamilton event. But we certainly draw from all over the region and surrounding regions. But the the infrastructure that's out at the fairgrounds, we have 100 acres yeah. to play with out there. And various different outbuildings um, from Merritt Hall, which is a world-class uh, exhibition hall and banquet facility, to all kinds of barn-looking structures that think of a, as Hamilton C&E. Yeah. And that there's going to be um, um, artisan shopping separate from commercial shopping. We have a giant uh, outbuilding dedicated uh, to a salute to our troops. Wonderful. Um, the Festival of Friends is only a couple of days after the last remaining uh, vet uh, leaves the longest war in Canadian history being the Afghan mission. Um, we have our Ford Pavilion which not only showcases their models but you can test drive uh, the 2012 cars awesome. um, within the park and all kinds of uh, we used to have a kids stage now we have a children's pavilion with with um, a proper stage and indoor and and things that you know an outdoor festival you would never think of having like the ability to hit some indoors and air conditioning yeah and running water and porcelain yeah um, <laughs> it is such a treat as well it's so, a bit of a lug luxury no sure. absolutely and and of course the main stage and and one of the secondary stages and all the food and it, it still remains an outdoor festival but we're a little bit weatherproofed yeah and we have so much more room to do so much more things so you've mentioned a, a whole gamut of wonderful things already there with the, the children's pavilion, artisan shopping, all that wonderful right. stuff that encompasses part of the festival. Um, of course, one of the big draws, though, is the music. And your billing for this season is is second to none. Yeah. It's quite outstanding. Truly, we, we would feel confident putting our lineup against any festival in the country that charges anything. Um, the Edmonton Folk Festival, the Ottawa Blues Festival, like the big monsters that are several hundred dollars a weekend. Yeah. Um, we feel where everybody is uh, as strong and, and the variety this year is tremendous. Friday, um, the Sheepdogs and Shad opening for City and Color. Nothing wrong with and that. <laughs> City and Colors is, is the biggest Canadian artist on tour this summer. Yeah. We are the Southern Ontario show. There is no other Toronto date. That's gonna be a huge crowd and, and that's a pretty big deal 
um, for a whole lot of years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then Saturday, of course, uh, we merged a few years ago with the Y108 Rock and Roll Picnic. And just some highlights of that day, the Arkells and the Reason, um, Saga and Helix, and then it closes off with the Tea Party. I'm on tour this summer for uh, the first time in nine years. All the guys are back together. Wonderful. And, and generationally, depending on, on how old you are and when you were in high school, that day has, has certain appeal uh, yeah. one way or the other. But Sunday is just a crazy day of main stage programming that we have lunch at Allen's, which I'm not sure enough people know what that is, but it's Ian Thomas and Mark Jordan and Cindy Church and Murray McLaughlin, four amazing uh, singer-songwriters, uh, of course, from Canada. We have yeah. the Nylons and Susie McNeil, um, but then we have John Anderson, the voice of Yes. Amazing. And we close it all off with America. And, you know, that's Ventura Highway, Horse, horse With No Name. Um, that's a huge, huge group with a ton of Grammys and, a, and millions and millions of record sales. So All three days with major top billings and yeah. lots of great stuff to check out. Even if you're not interested in any of the rest of it and you just want to focus on the right. music, there's great stuff to offer. And if Friday's not your cup of tea, then Sunday probably is or vice versa or somewhere in between. So. I see, uh, I, in listening to the, the names of artists, I hear a whole lot of Canadiana in there. That's interesting. It, it just worked out that way. This is this is a bit of an anomaly. We don't have to book Canadian. Yeah. We we like to, but with the dollar being so high, this would have been a great year to book Americans. Um, but for some reason, it turned out the way it did. Um, we spend many many months, both accumulating our budget and then and then spending our budget. Yeah. And we try and get whatever uh, provides enough variety and uh, as good as we can get. Absolutely. Good as we can get is definitely yeah. the name of the game. Yeah, we're pretty pleased. Of course, being a free festival, uh, I'm sure your sponsors play a major part in making sure that this happens. Um, who Who is responsible for making this happen? And No, that's that's kind of you to, to give me this chance of explanation. We do get some funding from the city of Hamilton. Um, we got some funding from Tourism Ontario. We're grateful for both of those, but primarily, um, we're, we're corporately sponsored and, and of course we are the TD Festival Friends, so yeah. TD Bank is in with us in a big way. Um, OLG, Ontario Lottery and Gaming, is the uh, main stage concerts uh, presenter. Ford is with us in a big way, Kojiko Cable's with us. Um, I, I'm going to feel terrible in terms of who I've left out, but, <laughs> but that's, that's how we do what it is we do. Yeah. And, and support of the festival should lend itself into, into support of uh, of our sponsors as well. They're the ones who should get the thanks. They, they allow us to remain free. Well, thank you, Lauren, for being with us and for telling us all about the festival. My Obviously, pleasure. you don't need to find out about tickets, but for more information, is there a website? Sure, yeah, festivalfriends.ca. Find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook. There's everything you need to know. Outstanding. Thank you so much. And thank of course, you. that's a, a great thing to check out this coming weekend. Join us after the break for Fun in the Kitchen on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. fortunate enough of course as always to have chef Rachel join us in the kitchen thanks as always for being with us thank Rachel. you Chris my pleasure we have a, a nice medley of colors in front of us I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear what we're making today today we're making ocean perch on papayo so um, a French term meaning uh, in an envelope so we're actually going to be cooking the, the perch in parchment paper we're going to make a little envelope for it put all these nice ingredients inside and uh, and put it in the oven we'll have a really nice summer summer fish. It's Sounds a little something different for your guests if you're entertaining. Perfect. Uh, we're going to serve our perch with some sweet potato fries. I love sweet potato mm -hmm. fries. One <laughs> of my favorites. So uh, we'll get started with that and they are quite simple to do. Okay. Um, 
just a couple sweet potatoes. I've already cut some up and um, peel them. And all I do is cut them into big wedges. Um, but really, if you like them skinny, however you prefer. Okay. So I cut it in half and then just into thick wedges. And then again, you might want to cut them in half the other way. Um, but that's it. So easy to prep. I'm going to toss it with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. Mm. And then they just go in the oven. And so I think, you know, maybe 30 to 40 minutes till they get a little bit of color. They're not going to necessarily get crispy like okay. a regular potato fry. Um, but you want to have some nice color on there. So I think 30 to 40 minutes is probably good for these. But you want to keep your eye on them. So if we're doing this as a, as a meal like we are today, it's best to start with the sweet potato fries. They're going to take a little bit of time. And then that gives you room to move on to the next step, which right. sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. So even if you cook these in advance, um, you know, they could they could sit out for a bit or you put them back in the fridge and just rewarm them later. Okay. I wouldn't do them any more than a couple hours in advance. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we got those ready. So a little bit of olive oil and we'll throw some salt and pepper in there. And then we'll get started with our veggies. That's easy. Okay, so we'll put these on a baking sheet and into the oven. And I pre preheated the oven to about uh, 400 degrees. Okay. And that's good for both the fish and the sweet potato fries. Well, that works out nicely, it does it? <laughs> okay. So we'll get those aside for later. Okay. Now for the fun part. Yes. Okay, so I should start off by showing you how to, how to make our envelope for the fish, okay? So quite easy. We have a uh, square or rectangle of parchment paper, and you just want to fold it in half. And then with your knife or some scissors, we want to cut um, a heart shape. I feel like you used to do when you were yeah, young like in school. Yeah, like construction paper valentines. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it with my knife here, just to give you an idea. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want that kind of idea. There you go. Fair enough. And we'll get rid of that. So that's all ready for our fish. Lovely. Okay. Now for the veggies. <laughs> I've pre-cut a couple of the veggies. Um, uh, red pepper is just very finely sliced, very finely julienned. Same with some shallots that I have here. I also have leeks and green onions. So a nice uh, blend of different onion flavors with mm -hmm. distinctively different colors and yes. different flavors. It's going to be lovely. Yeah, and we'll throw a little bit of lemon in there too, and I think all those flavors together will be really nice, and maybe even some fresh herbs. Of course. Okay, so. Um, the, the onions, I just want to show you what I've done. Instead of cutting them, you know, traditionally on a bias, I've actually taken each one individually, cut it into, you know, small portions. It's easier to work that way. And then we're going to cut them lengthwise. Okay? So very, very fine and thin lengthwise with all of your green onion. Similar, similar way of cutting the leeks. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a leak here. Now, you know, it looks like there's going to be a lot of waste, but really there's nothing that you can do with the top part of the leak. It's kind of woody, it's grainy, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, so we're working mainly with the bulb side of the onion right. in this one. There's not much in there. So we want to cut off the top and the bottom, and we want to use just the white and the light green part. Okay. Okay, now leeks uh, tend to get very, very dirty, so you want to make sure that you wash them well on the outside, and then even when you get to, you know, this stage of preparing your leek, cut it in half and then I would wash all the inside as well because it gets quite dirty in there. Okay. So you want to do that first. Once you have it all cleaned, you have a small little piece like this so you can take it apart, you know, in different sections. And then same as the green onion. You just want to very thinly slice it. Now if you slice all these vegetables thin enough, you won't have to pre-cook them. Okay. If you want to use, um, you know, some other vegetables, maybe you want to add some carrot in there. Um, then it's an idea to also to saute them ahead of time, maybe with a little bit of garlic and olive oil. Okay. So now that all of our, our veggies are prepared, let's put it together. Okay. We're using ocean perch, yeah. which is a, it's a beautiful fish and I can't wait to have it all together. Yeah, ocean perch is a, is a great fish. It usually has a ready color skin, um, nice firm meat. Okay. You want to make sure it's as fresh as possible. Okay. And we'll put it in here. So. I think I'm going to start with um, the leeks on the bottom here. And then we'll put the perch right on top. On the top of the perch, we're going to add all of our other ingredients. So 
also red pepper. And not only will these ingredients, you know, give the give the fish a lot of flavor, but um, they're also, you know, great with the fish. So it's all edible. It's all in nicely thin slices, so it's easy to eat. And it's beautiful. That medley of color is so lovely and so fresh. Now, is the idea that these are sort of individual servings in a, in a little envelope? That's sort of the, the plan? Exactly. Ah. When it comes out of the oven, you don't have to take it out of the envelope and put it on a plate for your guests. You just put the whole envelope on the plate, and it's something fun for them to, um, for them to experience at dinner. And um, when, you, when you open it for the first time, all of that steam and flavor and aroma is going to come out, and it's going to be quite exciting. We'll put a little bit of salt and pepper on as well. If you can grab me some thyme. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna cut a couple of lemon slices. Oh, open that up so you can see. Looks beautiful. A couple of lemon slices, not too much because I don't want too much liquid in there, but just some thin slices. And I'll quickly show you how to wrap it up. First time, perfect. Okay, starting from the top, if you wanna make a fold, Okay, and then at the end of each fold, make another fold. Continue to do that all the way around. Make sure the, the end corner piece is tightly secured, and then it's ready in the oven. It should Beautiful. take about 12 minutes in the oven at 400. So we'll get this in, and when we come back, we'll see the, the end result. Sounds great. Don't miss that on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Chef Rachel's perch in an envelope, all papio, mm -hmm. <laughs> are coming out of the oven yep. uh, and ready to serve. I can't wait to see what these look like all finished. Right, so these have been in for about 10 to 12 minutes. The paper gets brown, that's okay, that's, that's how you know that it's cooking and working. And then from here we just get some scissors or a knife and we just want to cut it open. Oh, everything looks nice and... Mm, nice and dark in there. Smells good, nice and fresh. Mm. Beautiful. So you just want to open it up like this, and then, like we said before, you can just serve it right on the plate like that. Lovely. And we've done a, a nice side dish as well of sweet potato fries, which have also just come out of the oven. And we've got a, a unique serving idea for that as well. We've got a nice little cup and um, a dip to go with it. Right, so this dip is great with sweet potato fries. Uh, just a little bit of mayonnaise, and we have some uh, Cajun spice in there, but you can use any spice that you have in your cupboard to make a nice dipping sauce. <laughs> so we'll just put these in our, in our fry cone here, and we're ready to serve. Fantastic. Of course, as always, Ooh. you can find this and all of Chef Rachel's recipes online at terragreenhouses.com. We'll uh, have we some go. of this fish, and I can't wait to try that Cajun <coughs> dipping sauce. Join us next week for more great recipes and tips from Tara at home. <laughs>